In this video, I'll be showing you exactly how to create a static ad machine for your business using Gemini 3 Nano Banana Pro. This machine allows you to test creatives faster than ever before and is essentially free. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into our ad account, go to columns, compare attribution settings and select incremental attribution. This is gonna allow us to see the best ads in our account that are driving revenue because of Facebook. This is eliminating ads that are basically slipping in at the last second and driving Having purchases just because Facebook snagged an impression at the very last second. Then we're going to go to our ads and we're going to sort everything from top to bottom. And what I'm looking for is my top spending ads that were above my average purchase return on ad spend incrementally. So you can see my incremental return on ad spend is 2.64. So what I'm really just trying to find is my top performing static images that are above this baseline of 2.64 and spending a lot. For example, I don't want to take an ad that spent $290 when there are ads that that spent $8,900. So at the very top, we can see right off the bat, ad number one, ad number two, and ad number four are all not only the same ad, but they're the same ad. They're all performing really well. They're all spending a lot of money and they're driving above the target return on ad spend incrementally. We're always using incremental rise because it's the most accurate to what can actually scale. Now, because I can't give away my client's ads, I'm going to use an example from Lululemon. So we're just gonna assume that this is the top incremental ad in our account. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save this image. And then we're gonna go ahead and paste our image into Gemini. And we can see our prompt just starts with this single image. The next thing we're going to do is decide what core element of this image do we want to change because we're trying to make iterations. The key thing here is that if we know this ad is top performing, we know something about this ad is working. So how can we create more variations of it? I'm going to show you a very simple example. Let's go to Lululemon's website. And after some quick searching, I just landed on this pace breaker jacket. So what I want to happen is I want this exact jacket to replace this t-shirt on this gentleman on the left side here. This is going to create a different variation of this this ad while keeping the core elements, which are the models. We're going to, again, copy this image and drop it into Gemini. Now, once we have that, we now have a stock image and our main template. And then for my prompt, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. I like to use as natural language as possible. The first image is an ad from Lululemon. We want to maintain this image. I would like to replace the t-shirt that the man on the left is wearing with the windbreaker jacket from image number two. Now, before you just go ahead and click submit, click tools, create images, and specifically, we're now triggering Nano Banana Pro. You're then gonna change fast to thinking with three pro. And once you submit this, you're going to notice this is going to take a lot longer than your previous times you've used nano banana. In fact, it might take two to three minutes. And just like that, our image is created. We have the exact same first image, nearly everything maintained, except the t-shirt has been replaced with the windbreaker. And what we have here, which I think is the big advantage of nano banana pro three is that we can actually see the thinking that Gemini underwent. So we can see it considered the garment swaps. It focused on the windbreaker integration and then examined the replacement. This is something that was finicky in previous Nano Banana. And then it evaluated its own execution. So it double checked its own work, which then resulted in what I would call nearly a perfect swap. I wouldn't physically be able to tell that this ad is AI because it looks exactly like the real ad with the replacement. Now, what's even better about Nano Banana 3 is we can make adjustments better than ever before. And the way that we can do that is super simple. We could actually tell it to remove text such as the Lululemon logo, the Black Friday sale with very simple prompts. So to do this, we could literally say, remove the text black friday sale go all out and there we have it our plain simple image with no text at all this is a easy advantage that's going to allow us to create many many iterations and you can probably see from here that you can do this with all of your top products you could swap in different products swap in different styles even swap in different people that you know you already have photo shoots of think about it like this yes this could work for model photography but also, it can work for very standard photography that has nothing to do with any sort of model or any sort of pose. You can swap in different products, different styles, literally with a snap of your fingers in just a minute, 100% for free. This has never been possible before. And now I'm going to show you exactly how you can take your competitor templates and apply those to your own ads without worrying about any copyright issues because we're just focusing on the templates. So to do this, I'm going to go into Magic Brief here. And by the way, I should mention that I have a full creative swipe file available down below in the description. It's within Magic Brief. You'll be able to see a ton of ads and ad templates that we like to use here at the Moonlighters 100% for free. Now we're going to be using
using Magic Brief for this example, and I'm gonna type in Talentless. Now, I like to use this brand Talentless because they are a large brand, but they're not so big like a Nike, a multi-billion dollar business. They're still scrappy. They're still figuring out their identity. They're trying new templates. They're trying new ads. And I find a lot of inspiration from these guys. So what we're gonna do here in Magic Brief is we're gonna go to the oldest ads that are running. So we're gonna sort by runtime, and I'm gonna look for the top ads that are running for a long, long, long time. And we can see right here, this lounge pant ad has run for a total of 356 days. That is a long time to run a single ad. So I'm gonna take this ad, I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna drop it into Gemini. And then again, because we're just using the example of Lululemon, assuming that we are the brand Lululemon, we're just gonna select a random pair of joggers and I'm going to take this image right here. I'm going to paste this into Gemini as well. And now it's time to build our prompt. So what we really want to do is we want to take our model, which is this picture right here, and we want to impose it on this template. So now we're defining this template in a really easy way. It's going to have something like the lounge pant up top, and it's going to have a couple key features here. And we could also get the pose to be followed by our model, which is pretty crazy. So the prompt I'm going to use is really natural language. We're going to say, use the first image as a template, keep the top image text, keep the tone and keep everything very similar, except we're going to change the products and the model for the images attached in numbers two and three. It's very important that we differentiate ourselves to keep the same underlying tones as the original image. And again, we're selecting create images and we're selecting thinking, which triggers Nano Banana Pro Gemini 3. And just like that, we have nearly an identical template with the model that we have on our website pushed into a different pose. I mean, this is absolutely stunning. It's incredible. It looks flawless. And I just want to show you guys the power of this because I think it's incredible. When I go through Talentless and look at their newer ads, we can see a lot of templates here, right? Each of these are literally a template in and of themselves. And this here is a very simple template. We have a guy in a t-shirt with a very standard pose that says final hours, $99 six pack tees. So I'm going to take this ad and we're going to mash it with a completely different ad, right? We're going to use something so unique that is applicable to Lululemon, which is the brand we are, I guess, pretending to be here and push it for them. So I took our very first ad here, literal copy and paste from Magic Brief. And then I took this flannel, which I thought was totally random and a totally different looking person than we had in the original ad. I pasted this in here. What I said is the same thing we said before. The first image is a template. I want to replace the person in the first image with the second, same exact piece, copy the pose from the first image. And what do we get? Our model from Lululemon replaced in the exact same ad template. I also prompted it to change 99 to 500. I could have easily said change six pack tees to the best flannels, anything we wanted within this template. So now we have the capability to look at any of our competitors, no matter what niche you are in and find templates that we think and are seeing often show up for their ads that we are inspired by, and then be able to put our photography in their templates literally in 30 seconds. So I showed you the step-by-step. -step. Now you need to understand the flywheel. It's super simple. We basically did it already. Every time you create new ads, you're analyzing those ads using that incremental attribution every seven to 14 days. Once you analyze those ads, you're pausing your duds. Those are ads that are not spending and not converting. You're scaling your winners to a graduation program. And then most importantly, you are briefing the best scaling ads. You're creating new variations of those new ads. And part of this briefing slash scaling process is coming from outside sources, which we're just going to pretend are all the way up here. These are outside sources, AKA your competitors. We're taking their templates and we're creating spinoffs of their templates. We're using it as inspiration for our own ads. This creates a nonstop cycle of creating new ads, analyzing those ads and constantly looking at both our competitors and our own ads for our own inspiration. Now I just broke down the exact way you can create more static images than you ever have before. If you want to see how we implement all of these static images and really any new ads in general into our proper M3 structure, which is one of the most important things when you're scaling and testing a business, then click this link right here where I go through everything A to Z for my best structure that we're using in 2026. That's all for today. I hope you got a ton of value out of this and I'll see you in the next one.